breaking down the pig. Um, I'm gonna hold up pieces as we're going, I'll let you know what's in the piece, and we'll break it down more and more. If there's a question, just you know, ask us and we'll let you know. Alright guys, I want to welcome you to come as close to the stage as possible. I'm gonna be cutting this pig up pretty quick just to show you guys how we can maximize all the cuts. I'm a whole believer of whole animal butchery or firm believer in whole animal butchery. Um, I like every piece of the pig to be used, every piece of the cow to be used. All up in here, you got your loin. That's where you get like your pork chop from or a loin roast. What he's gonna do right now, he's gonna pull off the trotter with the shake on it. So guys, the front end, I usually leave the front trotter whole. It's great for a dish. If you bone it out, you just cut straight down the back and you take your grind and your sausage and pack it in, wrap it back up, and then you serve the whole piece. It looks like the leg still, but it's a sausage that you made with extra is going to be shown here. So then I'll break the rear leg down and showing you all the goodies that's left with that. Nick just pulled the neck jowl off. That's one of my favorite pieces as well. Um, it's where your Italian with jaw leg comes from. So he's counting over to the third rib. He's gonna pull the shoulder away from the loin. So here's your pork butt, and there's the rest of your loin, your middle. Okay, so we're gonna using the saw to get through the shoulder blade bone and the spine bone. My breaking knife. Cut the whole shoulder off. So, right here, this is the butt. That's the picnic. So the butt's higher up on the shoulder. This is the copa. I agree, it's fine. I'm gonna split the butt in half, separate the butt, which is now called the Boston butt. Cut right through the shoulder blade. And you guys can see the color of our pork. It's not, you know, pale, it's not pink, it's red, it's hearty. So you got the pork butt now. Got the picnic. This is the loin that's the leg still. So we're gonna go straight back to the leg. Cut right through the hip. There we go guys. So it looks familiar. Cured for 18 months, you got prosciutto. Um, it's one of my favorite cuts on the entire pig. If you look at the meat, it's really dark and red, super healthy for you. It's got a really nice fat cap all the way around it. And our fat is super translucent due to our feed program. It's all natural. We got barley that we grow on the ranch, about a thousand pounds a day that we feed to the pigs. So they're just foraging the land. Barley, special feed program we have now. If, if you like cooking up like a pork chop from us or something like that, you'll see the, the fat. It's like it's like butter. It'll melt actually into the into the meat. Um, or you should get like a pork chop from like a grocery store. That fat will turn to gristle or ours won't. You guys can cut through with a knife and like perfect eating. You can't do that. So I'm going to pull the tender one off real quick. This is one of the more delicate pieces on the entire part of the pig. It's one of the leanest pieces as well. All through the 80s, I think every fine dining restaurant had bacon wrapped tenderloin at some point. So, turn this up for you real quick. So it's a little bit smaller than beef tenderloin, but I believe it's more delicious just because it's got a little bit more flavor being poured. This will go into the trim for grind, we'll save that because we like to use everything. So right off of here I'm pulling the pork skirt. In my opinion, this is probably one of the best cuts on the entire pig as well. Well, it's a lot smaller than beef skirt. Great flavor. It's basically the diaphragm that holds all the pig's innards in it. Right now, we're going to cut the rib rack off real quick and uh, show you guys how we do belly. Thank you. 
Is that just to get through the bone? Yep, yeah. just to get through the bone. We're gonna come right behind. These are the spare ribs here. These are the baby bags, but we're gonna leave the baby bags on the loin to have a bone in pork chop. <laughs> traditional spare rib right here and this is where the big debate of what is the St. Louis, what's the Kansas City. So basically right now we got the whole thing. It's Kansas City style. You have the rib tips going across the top. It's full of cartilage. Extra good pieces if you slow and low cook them. Um, great for barbecues. If we cut that off, you just got the regular St. Louis style rib. So St. Louis, just a little part, and then the rib tip on is Kansas City. I'll cut that off and show you guys what it looks like. Now you got the St. Louis rib. So you can start seeing, he pulled, he pulled the spare about, got the loin right here, so now he's in the belly left. So that's the point that the bacon comes from right there. So we'll pull that, we'll pull that next. in there. You guys can see it. So right now, I'm going to start cutting a couple pork chops. A nice little double bone taking shape. Ow! Yeah, we're keep cutting them. Big chops to get side. And it depends on how big you go. I mean, if you do a one inch chop, you'll get anywhere 10 to 12. If you go true artisanal and cut between the bones, you get 9 to 10. If you have a saw, you get maybe 15 to 20 if you're just doing like little cuts. I'm going to trim the skin off real quick, guys. This is great for making chitrones or stocks. Um, I'm going to make my stock, especially for fog or any sort of soup. I'll throw this in towards the end. All the collagen is going to give you that real crispy um, like flavor at the end that just kind of sticks to your lips. Stock. 
Their chefs are actually trimming the skin off and making macaroni and cheese with it, which is pretty cool. Right here you got the shank. This is a good little piece as well. Um, you guys braise it up for a few hours. It's a good amount of meat right on here if you skin it. Also great in soups and stocks. What do you do with this? Pull the cover? Uh, yeah, just pull the cover. Yeah. And then you got the hawk right here, guys. This is kind of like the pork also Uh Also, it's a home to the pork wing, which I'll break down real quick for you guys. Just gonna cut the outer muscle segment off. And if you guys look at our pig, it's almost like beef. Like that's from the pigs walking around the property, and not being caged, pasture raised, foraging for their food. So they're nice and hearty. Great, it's got marrow. You can roast it up. A little labor of love goes into this cut. It's a few seconds more than just a regular commercial cut, but French the bone, slow cook that, and that's you know, your pork drumstick, pork wing, whatever you'd like to call it. It's one of my favorite cuts. All right, back to the pork butt. We've got some butcher uh, Jedi skills at the place, so pull it off. Sorry, as low as to the shoulder blade as possible. I'm gonna cut straight across it. Yeah. And once I get to the fat side, I'm just gonna start trimming the meat back. Come back for this. It's got the blade bone. This is where the pork flat irons is. We'll talk about that in a second. It's gonna be one of the new hot cuts going into fall and winter, in my opinion. So, you guys see the marbling all through this. It's gonna start taking shape real quick. See, that's just pigs being healthy, running around. Uh, Marbleization is great taste profile. <laughs> so this one of my favorite pieces, the copa. It's a collar cut. And um, this, you know, we can do it as a roast. Cook it in steaks. Favorite cuts in the summertime, wintertime, springtime, San Diego's grilling season here long. It's my love. I'm gonna put this piece over here. You guys can see the fat, how white it is. And I can slice a piece real thin. And if any chef here knows or home cook, it kind of looks like bacon right there. It is bacon off the belly. Big Nick over here has been cutting some beautiful chops for us. This right here is probably about a 12 to 14 ounce pork chop. Um, enough for two people, says the average person, but are so good, I think everybody deserves one, so. We're gonna get into the picnic real quick, guys. This right here is the country style rib. Country style rib because the poor man rib is not politically correct anymore. I guess this guy gets a nice chunk. Personally, I think there's more flavor in this piece right here than in most of the other ribs compared to the baby backs. It's also, again, you get all the marbleization because the pig's walking around, muscles growing. In this for you guys real quick. And then we're gonna make the pork brisket. 
The pork brisket's awesome, but it's not actually 100% the brisket off the pork because it's really hard because the animal's smaller in comparison to a beef. To where the beef brisket's right over the chest piece and it's always available on both sides of the cut. To where the pork brisket only about that big. So I butterfly the whole picnic, take the bone out, and um, it's pretty much like a faux brisket, so to speak. But from the same part of the pig and the cow. As you guys can see, there's a lot of tendons and moving parts of a pig. This is basically like the elbow right now. Totally start to butterfly this piece open. <laughs> Like a little piece of pork brisket. So you can put this on the smoker for a few hours. It slices up great for parties, sandwiches. Uh, I did a lot of experimentation this year. I cured it for about a week and then finished it on the grill and it's great for braising. So right here we got the shoulder blade. This is where the flat iron steak comes from. There's been a lot of talk about the beef flat iron over the last couple of years. And uh, pork flat irons are just as tasty, they're just living on the smaller side. They're anywhere from 5 to 8 ounces, depending on how big of the pig. Our pigs are anywhere for, I'd say, dress 200 to 240 pounds, somewhere in that range, 5 to right around 300 pounds. Alright, here's the first pork flat iron, guys. Here's the second, so we'll just clean the fat off real quick. <laughs> this fat's great for uh, lardo, for uh, reducing cooking oil, um, even just for frying up and adding salad. It's fantastic. <laughs> so you got the two pork flat irons. One's a little larger than the other, but they came right here off the shoulder blade. And this is basically one of the best pieces also for stock soups roasting up. A lot of collagen and marrow in there, so you get great flavor. Um, yeah. Right here is a boned out middle, guys. Basically all the pork chops have been removed. Chops were laying in there like that. This is the last little piece of loin. This is the sirloin. Normally if you guys do portetta, they'll throw seasonings, fresh herbs in there. Um, uh, we'll tie it up real quick and show you what it looks like. So it's just regular butcher swine, guys. Start on one side. And I like using a snap knot. It's basically when it's tight, it snaps shut. An old butcher friend of mine showed me this knot. It's helped me out tremendously. And slowly we'll move on down. Making a porchetta, pretty much you can do whatever you like. Get as creative as you want. I've seen people throw the pork tenderloin in the middle. I've seen people take a beef tenderloin. Uh, I believe this holiday season, Nick and myself, we're gonna take some lobster tail from our buddy Tommy Jones over at Catalina Offshore. And we're gonna make a lobster porchetta, so I'm kinda looking forward to that. Slices, it's, it's really good. So, yeah. Yeah. That's the porchetta there, guys. So. I, I mean, guys do it with the whole loin sometimes. You got big old jack porchettas, you know, so. Yeah. And then, um, well, I don't have time to do the ham, but you can cut these into roast, steaks, skin it, smoke it, do whatever you want with it, make sandwich meat out of it. Um, we, you know, we sell holiday hams, some shameless promotion. We sell them at our place up in Julian and Fernie Mesa, so we do that. We don't throw a ham this time, but, you know, that's about it. Thanks for coming, guys. We're at our butcher shop, where you guys go see James and uh, Ty down at Hard Trotter. They buy pigs from us. Uh, we're the only real deal guys doing this. I want to share the trade. This is kind of like an industry that's going away. And it's really important to source locally, eat locally. And, I mean, you are what you eat. You feel better when you eat good. And 
this is like as basic as it gets, you know? Hard work goes into a good product and you know, we follow it from start to finish at our shop and I'm really proud of that, so thanks guys. Yeah. Hey guys, we're gonna give some stuff away. So get in line and we'll give we'll give you something to take home with you. Oh wow. Alright, thanks again. Our guys from Pink Higgs. Thank you guys so much. Now they're gonna be giving away some of this food. I'm gonna see you guys gather around, get in line. Thank <laughs> you.